evening to you. Good evening. I think I'm going to mess up more than help myself here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, pretty much. Uh, let me say, first of all, thank you for coming out this evening. It's not quite a larger crowd as we had last time. I hope that didn't turn a lot of people away because uh, they didn't enjoy the lecture before. Or maybe they didn't know about it, but I'm very grateful and thankful for coming out tonight. Those of you who have uh, made your presence known today. There's so many things running through my mind. I mean, first of all, extend a heartfelt thanks to Dr. Sharon Oliver for, again, contributing to my coming here and for making the facilities available. As always, to Brother Atiba King for his magnanimous spirit for always trying to research and bring out information to what he considers his people and to anyone who walks the metaphysical or so-called spiritual path. <coughs> uh, love the brother for that and say I appreciate your being here. There's so many things on my mind this time. Uh, I do a lot of lecturing and traveling. I do a TV show on a regular basis. They just took the show I've been doing for a year and a half in Texas every Monday off the air. That blew the whole thing out. That's about the third time now. I think I closed down programs, which I'm not proud of, but it lets me know I do very little cursing. I uh, don't tell people to hate anybody. Mm -hmm. I simply let the chips fall where they may and tell the truth, and everything else seems to fall in place. They hate or they don't, or they love or they don't, and they search or they don't, and so on like that. But inevitably, if I'm on a show for a year's time, something happens to that show. So that tells me that I listen to, it tells me that the very people who do need to hear me sometimes don't, but the people who don't do, and they act. Would that people who can understand what I'm saying would take action also before those negative forces act. I hope tonight, and I've been moved to kind of extend this lecture, we'll see how it flows. When I start getting these urges, when I don't obey them, that's usually when I get into trouble. When I say obey, I do believe in a higher cause and a supreme power and a being and a creator. Sometimes referred to that power as the universal prime creator. But whatever the names may be, something and someone created everything, and I honor that presence and the fact that it gives me the ability to speak and to think, and I try to honor that brain and that body for continuing to do it for a long time. So, when I get wound up like this, it's very difficult to start with one particular opening, even though the lecture was entitled The Coming Planetary Alignment, and was prefaced by the truth about our sun. I moved to almost want to call that the truth about our sun, our moon, and the coming planetary alignment, but we'd probably be here all night long, and so I'm going to let it just flow. Knowing how things usually go, and I've been lecturing now for 30 years, I've seen the most of it, I think I've lectured in every state, and over 200 universities and taught in three, traveled overseas now, so beginning to be kind of old hat. In fact, I used to teach classes. I'm saying this because the people have asked me a little bit about myself. They say, I don't say enough about me, but the subject speaks for itself. So I'll give you a little background. And um, I could never get tenure in the university. I stopped even trying because the one thing I would not do from the time I was 18, I got out of school pretty fast, I was pretty smart. Uh, at 18 was to not go and tell lies to black young people, and I found I could even tell lies to black young white people, or white young people. It just, to me, was wrong. And of course, the deans of departments don't like that. And as a consequence, I said, to heck with this, I'll start my own, and I'm happy about the day that I did that. We have our own institution. Uh, the last time we give our spiritual awakening to Chicago, we had 3,500 people to come out. And that's usually what we average on our annual there. Usually we average about 40 to 50 people at our weekly session. With all of that done, my heart lies in metaphysics. That is probably the most important subject in my life. Not the most important person or people, but the most subject, uh, important subject. And I have found that metaphysics has never lied to me, whereas all of these other books written by so-called people have lied, either through ignorance, or through duplicity, complicity, or a structure that wanted to train. I say many times, and I make some of my so-called educated friends and not-so-educated friends, but those who really have had a lot of schooling, very angry because I tell them, you haven't got education, you've got a training. 
And that's what they gave me. It's a I spent a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of sweat and tears trying to get those things together to appease people. And they got with intelligence, only to find out that I went through a heck of a training program. And I will state to you now, you can never get educated in this society and in this country under the circumstances that it reigned here for 600 years. They're not going to do it. Right. Now, saying 600 years, understand that supersedes Columbus and all this kind of thing. Because if they teach you the truth, you were here long before Columbus, you seen and read those books. I'm speaking to you as black people now. You were here long before Africa was ever thought about. I never named Kemet or any other word, Akibo land, whatever. I've studied, I have a whole list of it. If you feel that, <coughs> I cover the whole gamut from 250,000 BC in black history. I don't know of any other historian doing that because they don't dare venture where it's uncomfortable. You say 250,000 years, there's not supposed to be black history. But you have to start there to even dig up black history if we're going to think of black history as we now are taught. The idea that this planet is a very old one, and I hate to kind of trip, but I'm going to. I've even heard the summation of intelligent people stating that, uh, well, the Earth is 4004 BC old. Now that's wonderful and ludicrous at the same time to me. And when I hear intelligent people say that and insist on it, rather than argue, I usually just, just look. Because if I ever opened up my bag of tricks, we would fall out, and what good would it do? For a person to make that statement shows that they don't understand some things. But we don't even understand what year or time it is. Because we follow the Gregorian, Gregorian and Julian calendars, which makes the year 2000 one year off. We've already passed the year 2000. And the Chinese and Asiatics tell us we don't even know what time it is. But there is a group, the Luciferians and the Illuminati, who do know what time it is, and they're preparing because they know we've already passed 2000. For an enclave to happen at the Great Pyramid at the end of next year, and they want a downfall on our planet to make everybody come under martial law because they realize their time is short, and we don't know what time it is. When this kind of thing is going on, and I see such silly things being argued about, and how many times does the president zip on zip his pants? And how many times does, uh, you know, these things are nothing but ludicrous distractions to stop a people who should be miles past that where that shouldn't even take over 15 minutes discussion, a little laughter, and they should move on, becomes headlines that black people actually tune into, and I can't understand that. That defies <laughs> description for me with all the things we are behind in, should be doing, have done, and don't even know. We spend time learning about a president who we did not elect, by the way, did not even select, and had no consciousness of the law to understand. If you read that book, Vote Scan, you understand on the federal things, you don't do anything but go through the motions. You have no control on your power to vote, and it's not even registered if they don't choose it. That is a terrible thing to say at this time, but it is the truth. And people don't want to hear the truth, but I hope tonight. You're prepared to hear it, and I hope that my mouth will emit truths that the Creator guides me. And we can get into some heavy discussion tonight. It will turn out to be very way out, but nonetheless, I feel it. We live in an interesting time in one of the ancient Asiatic poems, and if you're talking about Asia, you're talking about a Negroid black man's black person's land. When you say Asia, we're talking about Mesopotamia 1, Mesopotamia 2, and I hear a lot of things saying sometimes that the ancient Asiatic and Chinese Japanese philosophers. That's a heck of a thing, but if you're talking about Asiatic and Mesopotamia and Sudner, you're talking about what? Negroid black lands. Mm -hmm. I'm going on the idea that the topographers and the physiologists and the geneticists use the Negroid, Caucasoid, and Mongoloid. If you're going to the Huangpo Valley, you're going there roughly around 3,400 BC, you're going to find the original Jaguar people, which they call the Naki Man, which is a black person, which is where your Asians begin in their philosophy. There is no Asian philosophy or philosophy that is so ancient that it does not involve Negroid looking people. Any land that you go to on this planet, any continent that you go to on this planet, any island that you go to on this planet, and you dig into the historical past, you will find the Negrito. The more ancient of days becomes Negroid looking, what they call the Negrito. Little black dwarf. Occipital lobed, long headed, 
dark, peppercorn hair, short. Anywhere from three five to four foot two. That's any land. You don't have to go to Africa for that. You don't have to go to Asia for that. You don't have to go to Europe, which is not even a continent for that. Antarctica would give you better reliefs of that, which they're hiding that fact now, but they even have found a blue period now in that Antarctica. Antarctica would give you the same thing. Everything worthwhile here has not been told to you. Because you're feared, hated, and loved at the same time. There's a certain kind of love that gets twisted. When you admire somebody so much and realize their potential and they don't know who they are, it kind of angers a person and so they take pots because now they can. The giant is lost, the beast is there, and they can do whatever they want to do. All because of ignorance, but there's a reason for that ignorance. And tonight I want to spin that tale. It's going to be one, it's going to be way out. I've already told you, prepare for that. Please don't go out to the end and you might even want to stand. Let me set the table and weave the spell. The idea came about that there was a tone that stated, may you live in interesting times. The whole adage actually was, may the gods descend upon you, bless you, and may you live in interesting <coughs> times. We are indeed living in interesting times. Where do you begin with all the things that are going on at this, on this planet at this time? They have presently, well, let me just start with that. I don't want to start with that. Let's just start with some of the things that, uh, you know. The Russians, four days ago, launched, and they're supposed to launch the middle of next week, a satellite. Big deal. They've done it before. But this particular satellite is supposed to contact their mirror orbiting platform or capsule. You've been hearing a lot about Mir and how terrible it is, but it's interesting, it's been up there all that time, and it hasn't on its orbit, it hasn't been generated from its orbit. And they use that to do a lot of things, and they always want to denigrate the so-called USSR, which is very much alive, by the way, and you have two divisions of Russian troops over here in the United States now that never happened in history before. Well-trained, their fighters are here, their planes are here. The Japanese have 29, uh, the Germans have 19 already here in the United States, Holloman Air Force Base in page one. Things that are happening now that you're not even aware of, the about which you've taken over and you don't even know. Let me again go back to this so-called mirror launch. What they're going to do at that particular time is to put up a mirror. They're going to put up 19 mirrors if they have the way. The first test mirror probably is now on its way to mirror, and there's going to be another one on Wednesday. These mirrors, they want to make the brightness of the noonday sun over many of the Russian cities and reflect energy and heat down there to make the areas of Russia that are cold warm. The capability of a country and a nation to put up this and put 19 of them in a circle and then focus them as they would over their continent shows you that the USSR is very much intact and very much alive. And if they move those mirrors, triangulate them, to reflect the sun, they can cause a heat ray to come on any continent that they want. And it's so high up, only certain missiles, ballistic, they can reach them. <clears throat> Hopefully they'll do this peacefully to just warn those cities. One of the reasons why they went to Russia, they had all these discussions, was to tell them not to launch that mirror. But you see, something else Russia has is a weather modification program <coughs> that the United States is just duplicating, but the United States is not as good at it. Nobody else has it. They can make weather. This country, you say, is in disintegration and Ruble is down and people are starving. Their soldiers are not starving. Their scientists are well fed and they're deep underground. <coughs> so I can use facts tonight. Facts that I want you to check on, research, and see what you come up with. I'll give you the solution and I'll give you the problem. But unless you do it yourself, you don't know whether to believe what I'm saying or not. Please do the research and take good notes tonight. Uh, hopefully, again, Brother King will have this tape. He'll buy the tape from me. If not, on the question and answer session, because I never run out without that, we can bring up these points. That plane that crashed off the coast of Nova Scotia this summer, killing 229 people, had a very interesting black box package. And when they tested the cabin of that plane, which, by the way, was 10 out of 15% intact, they found that there had been a temperature 
not only in the cabin, but in the first class section, that it reached 515 degrees Fahrenheit, and there was no charred metal, seat, leather, or person on that plane. Think about what I just said. Temperatures provable in that ship reached 515 degrees Fahrenheit. No charring, no carbonization of the metal or any of the plastic or anything there. What could do that? What did do it? What really happened to that plane? Many of the prophetic circumstances coming from many of the so-called prophets and the biblical book of Revelation and the book of Dizian, the Al-Quran, all state that when Mount Etna, Mount Vesuvius, and Popocatapetl go off in sequences within nine months period of time, that hit your knees, get your faces upward, and ask if there's a divine creator somewhere. Etna has gone off three times in the last 30 days. Look for Vesuvius, look for Popocatapetl. Popocatapetl is in Mexico. It's about 25, 22 miles to the southwest of Mexico City. And it is on a fault line, that chain that runs up here in the area of the Midwest. St. Louis, Kansas City, Chicago, Wisconsin, Minnesota. And that fault line has perturbations, little tunnel spurs that run into the area here of Canada and Detroit. If protocopper vessel, you be saying it, tremors and goes, we have a great problems in the middle of the United States. We're worried about the coasts. But something, I say that with an accent and quotation mark, something is causing that gas pockets in those tunnels to try and make that day on thing accurate. There were many UFO sightings down in Mexico City all during this year, about near the end of it, we're in November, one more month, and we'll be into 1999, supposedly. Those UFO sightings, when there was a big one hanging over Mexico City, it was so big and so gigantic that it caught the eye of the people. The foreign press covered it. This foreign press did not. Who is the people in ignorance? Who is the people and are the people with free presses? So many little UFOs came out of this big thing and they all went toward this mountain, Potocapa Bethel. So much so that the townspeople, dignitaries and all, began to follow them. And as they got there, they found that as they went up the sides of the mountain, began to get hot, their feet began to tingle, the shoes began to burn, and they flew down the mountain. It is so hot around there now, and none of the geologists, topographers, and meteorologists have said anything to any of the people about that. And of course, they couldn't know it, even though they have orbiting satellites that can get a quarter in your hand. They couldn't detect that. Popocatabello is hot underneath, which means it might be the third so-called reported volcano in history to blow sideways, and not cone its top and plume. If it goes sideways, you've got an earthquake that will take Mexico City off the map and come up through Texas, affecting every big city in Texas, and it just goes from there. We're in a very precarious situation. Nothing's being said about it. We're worried about who unzips his pants and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. To show the opacity, the, I don't even know what to say, of some of these scientists and how they play people's minds down. I hate talking down to people, and I hate for people to talk down to me. They cover stuff that is so ludicrous, and we follow it like we do the soap operas each day. I heard, this isn't the way I want to go, I know, but you'll bear with me. I heard a discussion the other day, I was happening over here. There's a couple that were arguing. And then there was a third voice, which I couldn't see them, but I heard them. Two people, two women, and a man. At any rate, the argument got intense. I was either ready to interface, intercede, or call the cops or something like that. Somebody's going to get hurt. <laughs> it turns out they were fighting and fussing over a soap opera and events that happened on it and some of the main characters. And the fact that the person hadn't seen it and the other one was pissed by the person with them not seeing it. That just defied any confidence that I had. 
It's all about a lack of something to do and spending your time in television. That blew my mind. These were supposedly middle class people, by the way, whatever that means. <laughs> They have found now that the Larson ice shelf, which is in Antarctica, down under, has recently broken off a piece of that ice shelf that is 92 miles long and 23 miles wide. We won't guesstimate the tonnage because it goes up 30 stories. It broke off. What is amazing, on a satellite, I have a lot of people that work the internet for me, and I say I know people all over the world now, they know I will use this information, so they may only stuff the facts and things are always going. When you saw it from an infrared photographer, when it showed the uh, satellite view of this thing, it looked like a little pencil that had broken off when you compared the whole Antarctic continent to it. If something 92 miles long, 23 miles wide, 30 stories tall, can look like a sliver in a toothpick, that dang on continent down there, that ice, must be tremendous. Tremendous. And it's breaking up. It's melting. Dan Rather and some of the ones of ABC, CBS, same difference. They all have the same presidents. They're all part of the New World Order, so they're not going to bring you any news that their editors are not told. Copy editors or program, it doesn't matter. They sent this guy up there in the middle of summer. If you watch the 10 o'clock news, you might remember. When he comes on about 10.30, they sent him up there, and he talked about a blue pyramid. How many actually heard that this summer, heard about it all? Anybody here? Mm -hmm. Oh, one person only? One person. Well, at least I have a corroborator. I didn't make this up, huh? All of you should have heard that and paid attention to it because what was the Blue Pyramid doing up or down in that article? And why would they send a crack reported on there? And I haven't heard him mention it since. He said he was going there and that was it. Blue Pyramid. Half again as tall as the one it is on the plateau, so called Kufu Chia. What was it And why was it found? And what else was at that complex? Or just somebody in the middle of the ice shelf had a 451 foot blue pyramid and it just suddenly decided to surface. Wisteria is claiming most of the waters of Earth. Wisteria is a red clay. It's that so called plant, animal, insect. And that's all I can talk because it's mutated. It started off as a plant, affected all the fish off North Carolina, went to the Gulf of Mexico, came over there again. <coughs> Be very careful whatever fish you eat. And it has caused so much havoc in the oceans of Earth that they don't even know what to do with it. But that's not the reason that the sperm whales and the dolphins and tortoises are beaching themselves, even though the government, whoever that is, and some of their controlled press releases are making you feel that. The reason why the sperm whales and the dolphins are beaching themselves is because their heart program is in full blast now. They know exactly what's happening. They try to pull these whales and porpoises after they beach themselves back into the ocean, and they come right back up and beach themselves again. They want out of here by any means necessary. The wisteria is a little red thing. They started off as a plant. Now it's become an animal, can actually walk, it's now mutated and can fly, and it's carnivorous little, in, I don't know what to even call it, but it's attacking most of the fish life. It's like a cancer that eats them from the outside in, and they lay eggs inside and they grow out. You all know about mad cow disease, so that takes care of the other things that are hooves and walk around. You heard about the chicken, of course, all the chickens that they're going to get rid of, and of course they destroyed all those chickens, the Asiatics did too, right? <laughs> Watch the chicken prices down, drop over here now. So you can't eat it, it swims. You can't eat it, it flies. You shouldn't eat it, it walks. <laughs> now you got to breathe something. Last night I got into this, I'm up on the board. Some of you I see you were there last night, and I appreciate you coming back out again tonight. But you can't breathe anymore either, because the petrohydrocarbons and emissions that are in your air now 
can cause all kinds of cancerous things. If your immune system is enough, you'll probably come down with some kind of congestive disease. Plus, you took those shots, and of course, they're into the little kids. The little kids will spread it to your home because you took them to the schools to get those shots. So what are you going to breathe on? Can't breathe, can't drink. Oh, you can drink the water. Forgot about that. You can drink the water, except in every major city, they find out now that there are a minimum of 28 different chemicals that they add to it, trying to kill the bacteria. And of course, as they found out 50 years ago, back in the 1930s, that once you do that, the bacteria simply mutate, and the second strain has longevity. So we'll be drinking so many chemical petrified water that they even tell you now that if you go into your favorite shower at home, you shut the door and you close the curtain, you're breathing so much, what? Chlorine that it produces a gas that can stunt your growth. Well, it's already fully grown. Stunt your brain growth. Yeah. Hope you never get that grown. And even cause you again to have immune system deprivation, deprivation of the car. Right. What do you do? What do you drink? What do you drink? What do you breathe? What do you eat? And then, of course, we still roll up our arms with these shots. We're living in interesting times. Didn't say what kind of interest, but we are living in interesting times. They've had ants that are attacking farms up west, down west, driving people out of their homes. So many ants are coming up. In the tundra, in the belt, down there near the Mato Grosso, down there again in South America, ants are coming out of there and they're getting into the underlayers of buildings and actually eating them almost like termites used to. In fact, they eat up the termites. I don't have to worry about termites anymore. They make very good food for these ants. They have cats now that are tracking hunters. Hunters are a very interesting breed of people anyway. Usually the ex-servicemen with the frustration and they want to get it on and they don't know what to do anymore, so they hunt. Oh yeah, I remember that too. I know how they train. What they say. These hunters, sometimes they get so hyped up with the adrenaline they'll shoot themselves. So they usually put on big red coats, or sometimes they have a circle. Some have a square, some have a circle, so that you know the side of a mountain, but usually they like to go up hill, you know, and downwind animals to sense them in a minute. And so they use it. So what am I saying? They have had hunters released in relays. I call it released, unleashing. They start out and then they give about 15 minute intervals and then the next hunting pack, usually five guys, will come up behind them. They have found now in the tracks that the hunters are finding, trying to track down other beasts, that there are puma and other type of tracks for big cats and even dog canine families in their tracks, which means as they're tracking the animals, animals are tracking them. More and more hunters are coming up missing now. Animals are getting so shrewd that they'll have one for a decoy, and as he takes him as that, the other two get him from the side. Not talking about it, though. Not talking about it at all. I know you saw that film where the deer attacked the man. Yeah. You, seen that one? you did see that one? Well, you had one, you know, I'm not lying about it. I'm not lying about that. Was that interesting? Yeah, quite. God said, you know, I'm mad as, and I'm not going to take it. <laughs> they should have done it a long time ago. It's enough of them. And pompous mankind and humans are so, you know, so secure now, they'll lose a lot of lives before they get hit that the animals are changing. In fact, in our purpose is changing. Chutacabra. Make any sense to you? Ever heard of that before? Chutacabra? How many of you ever heard of Chutacabra? One, two, three, three. might be Art Bell people who stay up all night long. <laughs> he's an interesting person too, by the way. Four hundred and fifty different markets. And you think White. he's for real? Come on. At any rate, Chutacabras are this thing that comes around seeming <coughs> sucks blood. It's like a vampire. Only this one seems to be real. Leaves the body plastic, all the organs begin to disintegrate within it. And Leave you blown dry. So we can leave a mighty building as a single bomb. It must be super chutacabra. But chutacabra is what they call it down in Mexico. And as they enter into the Mato Grosso, and if they do some of these wild genetic experiments, I'm not quite sure that we won't have a lot of chutacabras running around here pretty soon. Last but not least, 
I know you've heard about these two things. I'll put them together. The flying squids. I know you've heard about the giant squids and the squids and octopus in the ocean, right? Yeah. How about a flying squid? How about 25 feet long? How about in packs of 50 or more? How about major ships are being lost and people are being plucked off the decks? That's why your excursion boats now are kind of curtailing. You're going to hear about a lot of excursion fires because they don't want people to get too shook up about the flying squid pack. What I'm saying sounds like it ought to be the headlines <laughs> of the tabloids. <laughs> it should be all your news along with who unzips his pants. <coughs> it isn't. And about the two sea serpents in the Straits of Madagascar, off of Angola, Straits of Madagascar, eastern part of Africa, I'm sorry, western part, um, eastern part of Africa, and the fact that the Smithsonian, the University of Cairo, and some other French group have brought back what they call the best intact fossilized remains of a Tyrannosaurus rex. You know, they've been looking for that for the longest anyway, ever found. Now, what that had to do with sea serpents, I don't know, because the sea serpent is supposed to be a phalaeosaurus. The Tyrannosaurus was supposed to be a land thing. But they have it now, or they had it, at the Field Museum in Chicago. And there was a movie out not too long ago about something loose at the Field Museum in Chicago. Get the name of it right now. Yeah. Uh, remember yeah. it? Look. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Interesting enough. They sent it to the University of Chicago. Once you send something to the University of Chicago, you would need to go. They sent part of this phone structure to the University of Chicago. And the University of Chicago has a place called the Museum of Science and Industry founded through the Rockefellers. And very interesting, it took them a year and a half to build a parking lot there. They make from something like maybe $2 million an hour there. You don't have to build a parking lot. Now, it's right off of Lake Michigan if you've ever been to Chicago. It's an underground parking lot. You don't have to build that. But I understood that they did send this fossilized remains there, and they have some of the best genetic research teams on the planet that are paid all kinds of money, because money is no object when you go to the University of Chicago and do research. Grants and so are given all the time. And that's all I have heard about since that time about this fossilized remains. Everybody, as we know, seemingly in the intelligent first world, wants to make a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I think maybe they're succeeding. Pretty soon you won't have to worry about uh, going to movies to see T-Rex. We live in interesting times. Our sun, which is a very interesting item and a facilitator, gives us our warmth, gives us our heat, gives us our light, and enables us to stay on this planet. You've probably learned about the sun in school, you see the sun every day, and you've heard all kinds of stories about the sun. Some of the stories that they say about the sun is its structure, and they are pretty much since the scientists are very brilliant, come up with some certain concepts or facts about the sun itself. And they say that the sun, of course, is divided into three parts. It has what is called a corona, it has what is called a photosphere, and it has a core. The core, they guesstimate, is 35 million degrees Fahrenheit. The Corona, they guesstimate, roughly has what is called about a 15,000 degree temperature, and the photosphere, roughly about 10,000 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. But the outer edge there, <coughs> we call it again the corona, can go up to about 11,500, 10,000 to 11,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, does anybody know the boiling point of water? 212. Would you stick your finger in boiling water knowingly? Why? 
burning the face. Very hot. What's the temperature of it again? How about something 11,500 degrees Fahrenheit? Pretty hot? That's what they say is the outer temperature of the sun. The inner core of the sun, 35, 35 million degrees. Incomprehensible. Heat like that, no one can understand. That's why they say that also it makes this energy by converting hydrogen into helium. Follow me closely now. Let me lose you because if I lose you now, you'll be lost to me later on. I want you to go with me on this journey. Hydrogen to helium conversion is how they say these elements create heat. And the sun is so big. Well, it be the sun is 500,000, I'm sorry, 500 times the size of the earth so big that there's enough hydrogen and helium in its atmosphere that this could never hardly burn out. If it did, it would take all kind of fantastic number of years. They say also that there are perturbations that come from the sun. Solar prominences, flares, that push out the space 200,000 miles in a second of time, 150,000 miles in a second of time. They swoosh out. And these flares interrupt all kind of broadcast. They interrupt most radio and higher waves around our planet in our solar system. And they're always worried about sun flares. Recently, we've been hearing a lot now about what? Sun flares. Well, how many have heard about sun flares recently? I mean, again, test my audience. You can see we're off here. I got half of you with me. Great. So again, you know I'm not lying. These sun flares, they're saying now, could at any moment take off your favorite TV program or radio program because they're so intense that if it were not for the orbital path and the rotation of our own Earth, that we might even lose a continent or so on one of those sun flares. And they're very worried about where these sun flares may lead to and the fact that they're intensified. It's on the internet, it's on web pages. You need the dot com registers, I'll give it to you at the end of the lecture. But the whole point is that our sun is becoming very intense, letting out solar energy in the form of heat prominences, say 200,000 miles a second. Our sun also is another interesting object because it keeps all of the planets that revolve around it with the right temperatures at all times. We would think that the closest planet to it, Mercury, would be burned up, but Mercury still tends to stay there, so they've pretty much said that Mercury must be a boiling lava type planet simply because it is so near the Sun. Well, think of this we're just three planets south, third planet from the Sun, according to our meteorologists and astronomers. And we right now have a very cold surface temperature. In Detroit, it's getting kind of cool. Chicago, you know about the hawk there. <laughs> and what's very interesting is the proximity of the sun during these seasons that we experience. When the sun is very, very, very close to our Earth, or let's say when the Earth is very, very, very close to the sun, what's the season? I'm asking a question. Now, by December 21st, northernmost electricity toward the sun, then the Earth comes back around in retrograde motion, or I'm sorry, in centigrade motion, it is going to be winter, and that's when it will be closest to the sun. They call it perihelion. At aphelion, the furthest point in our rotational path from the sun, we have what? The sun. Element of hydrogen helium, helium conversion makes, again, for the combustibility and intensity. We just talked about on the sun. When we're closest to the sun, it's winter. When we're furthest from the sun, it's sun. Hydrogen helium conversion, intensity beyond description. 
asking your friendly astronomer, meteorologist, they will explain it very quickly. They'll tell you it's the actual tilt. That's spelled A-X, not A-C-T. <laughs> actual tilt, because Earth is tilted on its axis. Nothing in declination and so so forth hits it directly. It's all an incline, and because of that, it refracts off the orbital path and off the vortex of this, or oh, it gets real double positive. And you bought that. They explain everything away, but the way they explain it is to use terminology that you either don't investigate or seemingly feel that they are so supreme in knowledge that they know. It doesn't make any sense. But it makes sense to their comrades, and this is what they teach you. I'm sorry, this is what they train you. This is what they present to you in your school. So the axis of the Earth stops all of this thing. Something 500 times your size. Does it matter if I stand this way? <laughs> if I stand this way? If I turn around and stand this way? 500 times your size? How do you get away from something 500 times your size? No matter which way you tilt. Mm -hmm. They also have a very interesting phenomenon that they state that the sun is so hot that were it not for the axial tilt again, our planet would probably be bulging at the seam as the equatorial region and it would be a boiling inferno there. Interesting enough, when the so-called cosmonauts and the astronauts spent your taxpayers' money, well, some of you, <laughs> to go into what we would call experimentation and investigation and use scientific research. And the cosmonauts went out there from Russia and the astronauts went out there from the United States and they got out there so that they could go to Mars and go to the moon and go everywhere else. They found an interesting phenomenon and even had a little TV show. It was called, Where is the Sun? They went out there and they said they couldn't find the sun. They said Alpha Centauri, Epsilon, Lute, Procyon, Arcturus, all the various suns that we own, Jesus, who's been judging up the name sun system, all those suns could be seen, but the Earth's own sun couldn't be seen. In fact, they say it's a third magnitude dwarf sun compared to the suns that can be seen in this part of the galaxy, on, in this part of the constellation. They couldn't find the sun. If they took off from the wrong angle or so, they had to search for the sun. 500 times your size. Perturbations going out. 200,000 miles in a second of time. Hydrogen virgin. You get out there, you can't find it. What happened to it? I know. We, they hid behind the earth. They couldn't see through the earth. Something 500 times the size of earth. Something this big versus something this big, and you can't find it. What else do they say? They talk about the coldness of outer space. Cold out there in outer space. Freezing temperatures in outer space. How can you have cold in outer space when you got the sun that hot? First of all, they got out there and it's bright and they couldn't find it. Then they get out there and it's so cold that they can't live with it. The sun, we all know, is hot, and the sun is what? Right. Can't find it, and it's too cold in space. What? Why would this particularly be? If it is so cold, and the darkness also they talk about in outer space, because space is dark. If the space is so dark as it stands now, why is it again that the sun will still be out there? How can you lose the sun? How can space be dark? How can space be cold? Uh, I don't want to go further. Somebody give me an answer for that. Yes. Well, what I understand is it's reflection. Our sun is reflection of another sun, which is spherical. Okay. What about it? Right. So what we see is 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 not really there. It's the sun behind the sun. Sun behind the sun. 
So we really don't have a sun, we have a hologram. Right. An illusion. Right. We think it's there. Right. What school do they teach you that? Okay. Well, I, I read it. You read metaphysical literature. You read the way out stuff. Okay? So you're as, as out of as I am. See what I mean? How about somebody who can give me a straight scientific answer? How can you find something that hot and that bright and lose it when you get off the planet Earth? Yes? The nature of the sun's uh, electromagnetic waves is such that uh, uh, as, it, as it approaches our atmosphere, it hits upon certain elements within our atmosphere, or with, uh, hits upon our atmosphere and uh, transforms it into heat and light. This is my take, you've been reading mother interesting things. I've been reading other books. It hits Shucks. the magnetic force field Shucks. of our Earth. Shucks. Okay, let's just say that both of you are right <coughs> that some way out estimations metaphysically have to account for it, or that there is some interaction with what would be called the elements of Earth that as they interact, inertia starts and friction starts and heat is generated and light responds to it. That's to say all that's the case. Why don't they keep that in school? Why do they tell you that the direct light of the sun and the direct energy from the sun is so hot that it does all these things? Why don't they say it's an energy center and not a heat center? Why don't they talk about waves and propagations and resonances rather than elemental burning hydrogen and helium on the atomic scale, though. Because they don't want to know the nature of it. Oh. Oh. But you go to school and you pay good money to be taught about that. Don't you? The time. And who is they that they can decide that you shouldn't know? And why do you continue then to believe other things that they say if they told you that big lie? <laughs> That's problems here. Big problems. They better get solved very quickly. If we don't even know the nature of the sun in the center of our universe, on our solar system, part of a galactic combination of suns, and we still teach that it is hot and bright, let me help. Or well, somebody help us. We'll quit. Why would we send kids to school to be taught foolish physics? if there is a different physics that they're not even using? Or do they even know? Or what is our problem? The ancients had a whole lot of legends about the sun. In fact, the ancient Egyptians turned the sun raw, and there's different historical progressions that state that either that is a combination raw, by giving it a name, one of the various entities and energies that came from the sun and made mankind human and man able to live on this planet. The Japanese have the seven rays of the rising sun and said that they are sun-centered and actually should be running this planet because their ancestors came from the sun. That they're slant-eyed because they live in a planet very close to the sun and they don't like the Chinese because the Chinese are crossbreeds and the real Asiatic that should rule should be the Japanese people. That's true. You want their flag. See their flag? Understand the, the, the Osaka, what they're saying about where they come from and what they're doing. Why is their time? Everybody has a time. Everybody has a season. Everything seems to have in the course of things to do. Well, whatever our sun is made out of now, it is letting out <coughs> perturbations and prominences. So much so that it has the geophysical world, the astronomical world, shook up. And think about this. Also part of the physics and chemistry that they teach you in school, in physical science, they state that the fastest known quantity on our planet Earth is registered as the speed of light. Do they still teach this? And light moves at what? 186 what? 1,000 miles per second. That is the fastest speed. They talk about light years away. 
which means again, distances of planets and galaxies at something traveling 186,000 miles a second still might take a million years to reach. They're that far away. The speed of light. The speed of light talks about a path of energy and you're charting its speed. If that is the case, how is it that a body like the sun creating hydrogen helium conversion for heat can send out a flash, a flare, a protobescent that can travel 200,000 miles in a second of time. 150,000 miles in a second of time at a regular interval. If that is the case, what are they now saying? They're saying that an element, hydrogen is an element, helium is an element, is that correct? An element can travel faster than light. What? Think about that. If they are telling the truth about the speed of light, and they say they know it at 186,000 miles a second, and if you went through your physics class and chemistry class, you had to know this. And now they're telling you that something converting energy from hydrogen to helium can flare out 200,000 miles in a second. That means that the element can travel faster than light. That means you ought to throw away all the physical science books and you ought to sue them for, charge, for teaching you false whatever. You can't have both. Think about it. Tell me the flaw of my reasoning, please. You cannot have both. What then have I often asked that they measure the speed of light against? And they say a vacuum. No such thing as a vacuum. When you temporarily create a vacuum, it won't even last. And what's in the vacuum that will let you measure that speed of light? And even if they could, how can you then say an element can travel faster than light? <coughs> but now, of course, they have quantum physics, plasma physics, because they knew they were caught in lies. So in order to get into those institutions to teach that, you have to be hand selected. Because they know that's another big lie that they're still teaching, the speed of light. There is no such thing as the speed of light. I agitate, I generate, I is energy. It reacts against elements. Elements don't even travel. What they're talking about, they must be traveling because our sun is putting on more light. What our sun is doing, brothers and sisters, is to send out energy. They have miscalculated energy for atomic mass and structure. It is an energy source of high resonance. And at one time, it was like a step-down transformer. It took energy coming from the various suns, which are all lined up and all sending energy in, and it stepped it down so that the 12 planets in our solar system could stay in balance and have proportionate heat and light to maintain whatever intelligent life forms they may have. 1959, our sun started to reverse polarity. It finished by 1960, recorded by Dr. Marcel Stein, University of Chicago, not University of Colorado. And when they had the National Symposium on a yearly basis, they all agreed that this is what had happened. Our sun reversed polarity. Our sun now is no longer a step-down transformer. It is a direct emitter of energy. It's no longer a relay and hoping that the little life forms can take it it says, ready or not, here it comes. Mm -hmm. This is nothing new. Now they're reporting because the intensity is getting so strong, they're getting worried. And they figure they're going to have to tell you something because when the TV starts going out and the computers don't work and the calculators won't work, they'll say it's Y2K and you'll believe them because you think they're God. How many just heard what I said? <laughs> How many just heard what I said? That's three. Really <laughs> <laughs> now, how many are thinking about what I said? <laughs> they have magnetic computers that can give you a million gigabytes in a nanosecond. Now, what did I just say? They have such high speed computer capabilities now that you can get any kind of thing you want transcripted, broadcast out, million of them, in less than one one-hundredth of a second. How in the world then can you get a computer failure on little PCs and main and hard drives, and if you think 
that I'm wrong, think about this. Give you something your computer nerds, hackers, and, and wonderful. Something to think about. You can't lose anything off your computer, even if it goes down in your hard drive crash, and they can bring it up. Where did that information get stored if it's not in your hard drive or PC there? How can they bring up something that you crashed with? Because there's a bigger computer somewhere online, that's why you have to join the internet, it loses and gains everything you have and can override anything you have on that PC or any other mainframe you have connected to it. They already know that they're higher speed computers than what they're selling you. And every month they're changing it, it's getting fantastic what computers are doing. We even talk about CNC for computers soon that we even think on their own. Happened before in the history of our solar system. We can talk about that sometime too. Suppose that's good. If this is the case, how can there be a Y2K phenomenon that will put martial law on the streets of this country because nobody can solve the Y2K problem? Does anybody know what I'm anybody not know what I'm saying when I say Y2K? Just raise your hand. Mary Ann. One person, two person. Oh, how many know about Y2K? I thought that it's all over the place. Let's kind of briefly get into that. Just take about four or five minutes off. Year 2000 calamity is what I call it. Y2K. I call it the Millennium Mess. They're saying that in at 11:59 a.m. on December 31st, 1999, that the computers will go down, cutting off transportation, cutting off food delivery, cutting off electricity generation, cutting off everything that uses a computer now and that the bank accounts that you have will be wiped out. If you've got a million dollars in your bank account, all right, you've got $10,000 in your bank account, <laughs> suddenly you've got nothing in your bank account, and you can't prove it, and you can't get it. And you can't get your check from the government. You can't get your check from the job. And you can't get your the computer to order anything because the computers won't work. Everything we have, shipping that comes into Dominix and Jewels and everything else, comes transportation-wise either by plane or train. None of them can go because they don't know who's on the track. They don't know what delivery and what the code is on the invoice and the bill of lading. You can't travel anywhere because they can't generate a ticket. They don't know again, and they can't get gas for the ships or the planes because nobody's going to deliver it because nobody's going to get paid because they don't have checks. People will go in the streets crazy, angry, mad, and they have martial law telling you stay in your section or die. And they'll have all these concentration camps that look like, again, all these public storage houses that you see everywhere. That's what it's going to be. Yes, that's why you see them all around in every city, every state, and they're getting ready for it. And I tell you right now, it's the biggest lie I ever told. They can solve that anytime they want to because they already have magnetic driven and high drive computers. But what they have to hide is what's really happening to our planet that they have no control on. And since you think they're gods, they must make you think that the God now is coming down. And that man God, human, mankind, must come and save you from yourself. Our sun is putting out more and more magnetic energy, working on a magnetic frequency, which is exactly what every one of you should be praying for, because you have melanin. Mm -hmm. Why should you be praying for this if you have melanin? Because one of the things that people with melanin don't do well is to write. I didn't say they can't adapt to it. I'm not a fool. I didn't say that they don't have the talent. They like to talk. They like to hear. They like to sense. They don't just like to write everything down and then you got to read through a book. They teach you in school. John and Mary went to the store. See Dick. See Jay. See Dick run after Jay. I mean, no. <laughs> then, when you finally start to make some money in this system and you want to get ahead, you have to get to the speed reading. You cannot read word for word. You don't even read literally. I mean, uh, vertically. You read literally. They even teach you to read the wrong way. Then what do you do? You pay $380 a day to get Evelyn Wood reading dynamics. Mm -hmm. And then they tell you, imagine, scan, go down the page, feel it out, spread it out. 
Why did they slow you down in your most formative years when your brain was a blank thinking of everything from the age of one to three, when children in Europe can speak five languages by the time they're three years old, we can't speak until we're 33 years old? Because they teach you wrong and they know they taught you wrong, but they're not educating you, they're training. Mm -hmm. Melanin doesn't even go into operation until you raise your frequencies. It can only happen at night if you've got enough light during the day. Then you go into a dream state where all the things are in color and all the wonderful information is finally released and if you can begin to interpret those dreams and tune into it, you can talk about astral projection and everything else that you can do with that melody if it stores up enough in your body. Of course now, you said there's people that listen to Art Bell, of course you got, what is it, Ed Dames, he's got remote doing. <laughs> well the poor black man's remote doing is astral projection. The rich white man is remote doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've gotten so unconsciousness, unconscientious or whichever you would, that when you say anything about voodoo and, and spiritual readings and psychics, ten years ago we wouldn't even let it touch us because we didn't want to be connected with that kind of foolishness. Mm -hmm. And every president of the United States has his own astrological advisor. Mm -hmm. Hitler had a phrenologist, an astrologist, mm -hmm. and a palm reader, and every other thing, a grandpa. Mm -hmm. But we're so afraid of making the wrong move, we won't take our own creator's gift that it took us centuries to develop, and the gift from the gods was melanin, and use it correctly. It can only happen that way with melanin. Mm -hmm. And you better pray you haven't rancid it, better word, your melanin <laughs> very quickly enough. Because as this sun puts out more and more energy, the frequency of this planet will have to rise to match it. And the inner sun of our planet is already trying to match that frequency, and you haven't seen volcanoes erupting yet if it doesn't hurry up and do it. And they have nothing to do with that at all. They agitate it. Like little kids with a bonfire, they take pieces of it and throw it away, but they can't quench the bonfire. Out on the sun. They are lying through their teeth, deceiving as they always have, and you, unfortunately, in mass are still buying it. Individuals are beginning to awaken. There's some very interesting phenomena happening to awaken individuals. Things that you used to have to go to the surface school for, the shaman school for, to get a Rishi man, or, or again, to teach you how to put your hand in fire and not feel it. Walking charcoal, walking burnt coal, able to move objects. Fascinating. <clears throat> the people are now doing it commonplace because they say you can go into an altered state of consciousness by which your wiring in your central body cuts off from the brain and you don't feel these things and when you don't feel these things they don't affect you the same way. When your frequency is right, you have a force field around you that gets so intense, it doesn't act like it usually does. And if you have melanin, it's always trying to adapt to different frequencies. Even frequencies like are coming from our sun now. They tell you there's a hole at the pole, ozone hole. Ozone, a big threat to the people of Earth. That's a lie. It's a big threat to some few men on Earth, <laughs> and some kind of man on Earth, mankind, but not man and woman man on Earth. Never has been, never will be. Carcinomas, melanomas, leukemia, skin cancer, intradermal tissue deterioration happens to people who are very light, and melanin cannot take that area and seal it off by tanning and distribute the wealth, because that's what is coming from the sun, wealth. And one man's wealth is another man's wealth. <laughs> the deliverance that people have asked for is at hand, and people are running from it because the great white coat have told you it is destructive. But destructive for whom? Destructive for what? And when is the destruction to be at hand? 
species of animals in everything, in every medium, are dying or committing sacrifice. The oceans, the air, you hear birds now that are just falling out of the air, can't explain it. Homing pigeons can't home anymore because they forget where home is. <laughs> Sperm whales, porpoises, dolphins, beating themselves. Two things are happening. First, there are volcanic activity at the bottom of our ocean, which is changing the water temperature, and they know it. But they were intensified not by some creator or God or whatever name you refer to your supreme being. They were done because of the heart program, both in America and in Russia. The acronym HARP, High Active Auroral Research Project in Gonoka, Alaska, in which they have set an array of intensified energy that they are beaming off of the ionosphere, <coughs> refracting it back down into the earth, and it's affecting everybody underneath it and everything underneath it also. That HARP program has found out that on the continent of Africa, misnamed of course, are gold and silver veins that if they can get underneath it will send off enough energy that may protect whoever can get underneath that area from some of the incoming energy from the sun. And they already, that's why Clinton went to Africa and South Africa. You think they went there because they worried about what the Africans are doing? Nope. You think they went there because they worried about what African ears are doing? And still they have road scholarships? Come on. Please wake up. Please understand what time it is. On Mr. Bell's program and that wonderful person. What's his name again? Dom? Remote viewer? What's his name again? Dane? Dane? How many heard the broadcast? How many didn't say where Art Bell listens? I'm going to be honest now. One person, two. Okay. Remember when that name was on there and he made a statement that there was something from space that released up over Africa and it was going to release a fungi and a, and a microorganism that was going to destroy a lot of life or a lot of uh, tropical plant life? How many heard that program broadcast? Yeah, I see him. I lied again. But he was. <laughs> and if you believe him, everything that is bad reported in the United States of America by the press always has to come from someplace else. The Asian flu. Well, Asians have been flying for some time, have they ever? <laughs> oh. AIDS from Africa. Well, somebody should as much as they took to Africa, they need to eat her. The Hong Kong flu. What are some of the other things they need? Where did these diseases come from? The Ebola from oh, from Africa too, wasn't it? Got a lot of tapes. Please buy some of my tapes. It'll help me to do more research and get out of this country faster. I may give you some information. <laughs> A lot of loose ends is going to take a lot of money. <laughs> Everything that comes through this controlled press, through these educational institutions, and I hate to call them that, through this disseminating whatever again, is to make you not understand what is really happening. Mm -hmm. If you have any doubt about what to do, find out what they tell you you should do and do the opposite. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll probably come <clears> on <throat> much better. Everything that is disseminated. I was talking to the roof last night, and you know I can go into the health thing on that part too. Everything that they tell you is wrong and it is deceiving you. As our sun has reversed its polarity and is now putting out more energy, it is changing to magnetic frequency. Our Earth pretty soon will not be able to generate electricity. And everything electrical will fail. <coughs> Get ready for brownouts, blackouts, dimouts. As Edison Company put in comment, rotating blackouts and brownouts. 
everything rather than admit the truth. Generators blowing up, that's why they were after nuclear power, and the nuclear power that they had is nothing but a big hot water heater. They say, oh, Blair, you just make everything contrite, you go so we have to the project. That's exactly what it is. They go through all this fallout to generate heat so that a hot water turbine can take it around the reactor and they send the hot water out to you. I think it's a better, easier way to boil water, don't you? But you bought all of this wonderful science. Every scientific, well, let's just say that might be too much of an exaggeration. 90% of the scientific advances made on this planet have been done by Negroid-looking black people. And they hide all of that. We still think that Caucasians are the generators of original thought and creativity. If you believe that, and I got five bridges I want to tell you, and all in my hip pocket. This planet is a creation and a maintenance of various life forms, one of the few places in our solar system, and probably our galaxy as I do my research, that such a thing can take place. We can have seven different kinds of life forms here in the form of what we call humanoid. No other planet can do that. We have literally trillions of other kinds of life here. If you go into the microbiologist world, you know what I'm talking about. Now you say, well, there are only five races of man. Well, there are only five races of human beings. Well, but there are only five races of mankind. Well, there are two more. You don't know about them. The inside earth. They make contact with them. And they also know that everything on this planet has a reason for being, and now it's time to elevate that consciousness. The energy from the sun is coming in, streaming in, with the energy that is going to cause magnetism to become the way of life. If you read Hatan and all, you got three days pretty soon coming up of darkness, if you believe Hatan. Read about some of the books of Revelation, there will be time when the clouds will be hidden. They will hide the sun, and great pestilence, and the beast will walk the earth. You read the al Quran, and you read again when Allah has judgment, and when Muhammad was told again that there will be changes coming, in which man would not be able to live unless man had found ascendancy, and the great plain, the mother plains would come. If you read the book of Dizian, or the Kish, and down in South America, the Papuva all talks about a time when the sun will change, when the people on the surface of earth will be fried and other people will ascend and others will have to go into the earth to live because they will not be able to stand the light of day. The light of day, the energy of the creator, not the heat, the light of a higher resolving magnetic frequency in which the spirit of man will be illumined and people will glow but they'll go because inside they're finally coming alive as to who they are. They become then sons of the sun. Have you heard the phrase, there's nothing new under a sun? There isn't, because when they're sons, there's going to be control ability and control factors. Without a sun, you create your own life, as they have done in many strange places on Earth, because you generate energy, and you see on a plane much like we're talking about now, infrared. Because you see with your soul, and you see with your heart, and you see with your eyes only after the other is done. Our planet has a great interrupter, and a great degenerator is called the moon. The moon is an artificial body that is hollow and should not even be there. The moon generates electricity and has been a plague to man ever since it was placed there because it allowed human and man and mankind to live together because only man could survive if this moon was not there. That's why they're going to the moon, finally. They lied about it for 30 years. The moon creates an electrical factor that makes our Earth electromagnetic. 
instead of magnetic. The moon is failing. Two years ago, in January, the moon was on fire. The side of the moon that we see was all red for 30 days. Actually, it was 27 and a half days in magnetic month. It showed up on the infrared scopes as a thousand different fires, a thousand points of light on the prophetic prophecies that we could see in the sky. How many of you even heard about that? Tabloids had it. I know you don't read tabloids, but you'd rather read the real press. Real <laughs> Get more truth to the tabloids than you will on your daily issues. <laughs> when this happened, it was not that it was a lot of flames, it was an energy that was being released that showed up as little points of light or numerous fires on the moon. Something that tapped into the energy source of the moon and released some of their electrical frequencies and it showed up as little points of light. Believe it or not, if you could see your planet now from space, it would show up as multifaceted points of light because our earth is on fire. Go to your internet. Go through Gary North. I get the dot com register. Go to Will or Bill Cooper. Even go to your favorite Art Bell. But look under meteorological phenomena. Find out that they have on web pages, and I have, I didn't bring a lot of this with me because I didn't know what you were going to get into this. But like I told you, when I get moved from within to do something, I better do it. But otherwise, a lot of people want me. When this shows, it shows Greenland with various points of fire. It shows Saskatchewan, Canada, and various parts of Canada with fires. Wyoming, Utah, California, uh, Texas, Minnesota, various points, about 30 different states in the United States, points of what looks like luminescence and fire. Greenland, Japan, the islands there in Hawaii, all on fire. And something seems to be coming from space igniting these fires, or something seems to be releasing the fires from the inside. Many of the fires are magnetic or electrical in frequency. Some are actually burning. Check your web pages out. What do you hear all the time now? Fires out in California, fires in Oregon. They've been talking about this since 1987. What can be burning? If all those fires, with all that acreage, has been burning up out in California and Oregon and all like this, you have no produce. You have no wildlife. What burns? Rock doesn't burn, as far as we know. Just the fires alone. And this may be true, or something else may be happening, because if you go to your produce section nowadays, and if you've been into fruits and vegetables, you know what you're getting now. I don't know what to call it. And you know how quickly it spoils, and if you put the K07 or something like that to soak it in it, you know what it looks like when you come back 15 minutes later. The things that these have been petrified, gassed up, injected, or warehoused. We're not even getting enzymes and proteins and nourishment from our food and produce. And if we can't get it from the produce, what are you going to do? Buy the canned goods? <laughs> well, down your aisles of your favorite store, and I always tell people, don't stay in one aisle too long, because you're going to be observing. You know, come down, somebody come down there with nothing in the cart looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got the television there. They got it, Go down there, put five or six cans into your wagon. Take them home, you actually buy them if you want. And research what is on there. Don't just look at what's on there. But they don't lie, they say what's in there. Go look it up. And then tell me how you could ever call that food. Life force. It would take life out of you trying to process it. You don't digest it, you process it. Most of it gets caught up in the cold and everything anyway. We don't even get food. You talk about soul food. <laughs> It'll make a soul out of you very quickly. Permanent. <laughs> <laughs> it will. Read what's in it. I'm not going to go into a, a health discussion, but I'm just saying, we have been so controlled on this planet that everything that can let us raise in vibration is canceled out. 
And now they, whoever they are, are so afraid, and the government is so worried, that they want you to get shot. Have you ever seen such an outbreak of shock to stop an outbreak of disease that may never happen? Kids beneath the age of 12, prepubescent, getting hepatitis C shot. How ludicrous. As parents, what can you be thinking of? Why would a kid not even 10 years old need a hepatitis C. Why would he need or she need a hepatitis B shot? Mm -hmm. And what on God's name, if there is a God somewhere, would they want a hepatitis C shot for? They're sexually active, they're doing it to everybody? <laughs> <laughs> They've been exposed to AIDS in your home? A woman goes to the hospital, and if she doesn't sign papers and threaten to sue everybody in the hospital, not only is the silver nitrate put to the baby as it comes down the birth canal, but then you've got to get five different shots in the infant because they're born without immunity to a planet, and yet they've got a big pineal band up there with melanin. Anybody with melanin doesn't have to get vaccinated for anything on this planet. In fact, if you can just help those glands, you'd probably be better off than getting the vaccination or inoculation. But I'm not going to go on that planet. I already just did. <laughs> Every sign shows that they're worried. Every sign shows that there is a people or persons with potential that they don't want them to ever achieve or to come into consciousness of the potential that they have. And as you travel on this planet anywhere you want, on that planet, as was the constitutional mandate when this country had a constitution. Being three of a human being, of course, it never applied to you anyway. But even if you thought it did, this was their constitution. There's a higher constitution and a higher order that you serve. And I think it's time we begin to kind of approach that. With melanin, you can live on any planet in the solar system. People without melanin cannot. The truth would be when the signs were given and when on other planets and other things, there would be symbols in, that was in ancient Mesopotamia, in Egypt, and other places. You got a big deal, supposedly, about the face on Mars. You got a big deal about, supposedly, the Sphinx on the moon. You got a big deal, supposedly, about the Sphinx and the spaces that they found, uh, pyramids that they found underneath the oceans here. About the runs in Miro and the Olio. <coughs> about the one in, 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 um, which is right off the coast there of Osaka, Japan, and the Lucian Islands up there in Canada, finding pyramids everywhere. Big one down in Edgar and Collinsville, Illinois. Pyramids everywhere, and sphinx everywhere, and all the sphinxes look negroid, and that's why they're going crazy. The one in Mars looked like a black woman, and that drove them out of their mind. <laughs> Whatever mind you have. <laughs> Everything is awakening to who you are but you. Everything is awakening to a higher magnetic frequency. And we're still worried about what's going to happen with electricity, what may happen at Y2K. They're running scared because the very planet is turning on. And who is their savior? You. And you don't even know who you are, most of them. These people had to depart real quick when I wanted you to test your ability to concentrate and not go to sleep. Most people that have to think in a higher frequency go to sleep. Other people now can become alert. It's disruptive what I'm saying because I'm making you think. You have the thinking capacity. I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to educate, not train. For you are walking dynamos about to trying to find out the power you really have, the power of thought concentration at night when everything else sleeps and you can reach them and they have no defense if you know what you can do. Or you have an astral body and you have a soul center. You are Solomon. Soul man. Solomon. Womb man. With the ability to conceive mentally and to project it. And if you read the true dictionary, conception is to conceive mentally. Well, unless you conceive mentally, you can't do it physically. Mm -hmm. 
And the first conception is in the mind. And melanin is a trigger for that portion of the brain that must awaken at this time, the magnetic frequency. Thus you had your Atlanta killings mm -hmm. and tappings. And the Orange County killings and tappings. And it goes on all over the planet. And that's why they want black babies. Mm -hmm. Just to be in the presence of a black child at this age and the kind of soul that comes through is to illuminate you. Mm -hmm. And if you can tap into their fluids, it will preserve you. I didn't know I was going to get this way up tonight. <laughs> and I really don't care who leaves, but I do care who stays. Because if you stay, I'm not going to share this kind of information with you without you acting upon it. If you have heard tonight anything, and I've only dropped a thousand different little bombs, that triggered something within you to come forth and be who you are, then this lecture, if that's what you want to call it, was worth the while. But you don't have to 1999, December 31st, to act. Every day that you don't act is another day that they do. Mm -hmm. For they're rushing against time, which you're able to bend and in both, and they can. They're rushing against frequency and energy from the sun that will keep you alive and kill them off, or make them go in the ground, or away with shields. They'll be walking through the pretty streets with face masks and body suits. Mm -hmm. The energy is too intense. It is not hot and it is not bright. <coughs> it is illumination and energy which you can reach the frequency for. And everything they can do to stop you from be converting to what you should be, they will, including the most hideous form of the <coughs> shock. Lower your vibration, making you less than an animal because they get the needles and the serums from animals. And as they say again, and from <coughs> aborted fetuses and things like this. Every state inspector in every city in the United States that comes around, first municipal and then the state inspector comes around, they take the eviscerated remains of corpses and you must put it in a bag and give it to them. It does not enter into the system. Even in war times, they exhume and eviscerate. Why do they need those organs and those glands and those plasmas? They're now cloning. They've been cloning since 1955, University right. of Chicago, five years. Put them on a highly studied for 22 years, and they tell you they don't know how to clone, but one day they might. Well, they can't clone, but they're gene splicing and give you tomatoes with insect venom and give you all kinds of other things that are cross species and cross phylum, anything to try and hold you back from developing as you should and work. You cannot fight your habitat. <coughs> You cannot fight the plant that gives you life, and you cannot fight the Creator God. You can't even fight the Creator. But they think they are because they have fooled themselves into thinking that they're God, and many of you still worship them. Many of you do. Hopefully nobody here, or at least after tonight, you won't. In closing, I try to think of myself as an egotistical poet at times. And reading some poetry, I say, my ego better get some better buildings because they're better than I. But from time to time, I get moved to write, and I use dynamic pentometry, just like they taught me, trained me in school. But I like that kind of one. I want to share with you something I call human. After that, I'll be open for questions and comments if you choose. Oh, magnificent beasts on this strange, enchanted land, you roam your asphalt jungle clothed in skin that we call man, incredulous and sensitive in Congress to all of God's created works that you find both large and small. Just how long can you wander in your self-created web of total make-believe about who and what was said, changing who, changing why, and what was in antiquity, as the whole world starts to learn of your strange ubiquity? Your incongruent nature makes you tell so many lies, makes you all the written from the cosmos to our sky. You've reconstructed universes, you've summoned even hell, yet there seems to be no end to the lies your mouths can tell. What you view on graphs and prisms, what you see in lens and scope, seems too staggering to your mind and ego brain, and so to cope, you distort the very heavens, you'll change the smallest beast. There seems to be nothing that you, your fame will not increase, and yet you know within, from the most into the least, that your time is running out, that your fame will soon succeed. 
As we view its bright new morning, even through polluted skies, we know there is a creator, for creation never lies. And so we come together, lost-bound people, tried and true, asking blessings from our creator and divine release from you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Does my heart and blood good? And as I don't run away, it's open for time for questions and comments. Let's not stay over past two hours. Okay? Let's try, first of all, one question from one person and then repeat it. Let's go here and then we go. Uh, you mentioned something about uh, when, a, when, a, uh, when a fetus, is, when, when a baby is being born, about them injecting silver nitrate back into the birth canal. Could you elaborate on that a little bit more? Huh? Yeah, I'm a victim of one of those. They had certain years when they did great. And then I had to learn again to, I was supposed to be blind, a little by little working my way back. Supposed to be next year off with the glasses, we'll see how I can do. Uh, they put silver nitrate into the eyes because they're saying that the, uh, the woman's vagina, the birth canal, is, you know, disease and full of germs and it's the only way to protect it. And unless you sign papers or have midwives and do it away from there, they do that automatically. Now they're even putting, giving three shots automatically on that first week. So it's, oh, I thought you didn't have your answer. Um, you're talking about going. Where are you going to go? Hmm. You're getting out of here. Where are you going? I want to go. Where are you going? Well, I'm going to tell you. Right now, I'm not too sure. <laughs> but I've got feelers and life plans. I've told everybody where I go. I've lectured all over the world, and people have traveled, have been to my students and stuff. I said, look, when you get a phone call from me, no ifs, no ands, no buts, I want in. Okay? Yes, indeed. I have places in Africa, I can Botswana land being one, so on like that. I have places in Japan I can go. Various, I've been to almost, I think, two states in the United States I haven't been to. But the problem is this. I was just, um, this summer, um, Madam and I, we went to Tucson, uh, Arizona, and then we went to Douglas County, then we went to Douglas, Arizona, two miles from the Mexican border, with the, the people that were there that we thought we could respect to live with, knew how to rough it. We've been in training for that for some time now, and we thought maybe we could live there. I had to fight, um, what do they call these things? Scorpions, rattlesnakes, <coughs> kangaroo rats, everything's down. We even had some bulls came over their hill. <laughs> and walked down to the perimeter again and looked at it. Got along with it. Mm. That Sunday we were there, here come two Air Force jets. And they went around the compound and they banked their wings twice. And I heard from the guy who was there who started the whole uh, situation that they've been doing that now for six weeks every Sunday to come around. Let you know they're there. And you can see the little, they have these special gadgets. They have sensors. I mean, they've blown up taking pictures of the whole bit. And like I said, I can see this. Little phrase then will be Meteor hits Douglas County, Arizona. <laughs> Tremendous fires raised, but it contained in the valley, no wildlife or no intelligent life was lost. Uh -huh. Eighty people just wiped out. It turned out forty miles from there they have an army base with the Air Force detachment where they test the stealth. Because that's where they go to those remote areas. That blew my mind. That just upset my whole little flag. I already was trying to find areas in Africa that I thought I could go to and I could live comfortably with. And now, of course, with the Tutsis and the other maniacs over there again, now they got Angola into another fight. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes on and on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the brother Arabs sometimes don't know who they are. I'm very sorry about that. I'm an honest person. Mm -hmm. I have a problem knowing where I want to go. And then, if I can get away from the acts of humans, mm -hmm. I've got to worry then about nature. And when I pattern and tune into nature, I've got to worry about heart programs and people giving shots and flying over, dropping biologicals. i got a whole lot of things planned. One of them is so way out, I'm not going to talk about it. But I have problems trying to do that. I've been thinking about this for 10 years and haven't found a place I want to live in. But i got ready packed, and supposedly things to let me go when I want to. I just hope the Creator will help me as I try to help. That's more honest answer I can give you. Yeah. The, um, the magnet, the, I know there are magnetic... Um, um, health aids like the mattress, the mattress um, yeah. covers or so. Um, will those help us when 
when the sun turns magnetic? Oh, they will help you now if you use them to build up your magnetic frequency. I'm always walking around with at least nine thousand dollars. Sometimes I have the pads on and the feet and all like this. So you got four. This is one thousand. These are four magnets with four thousand dollars. Helps my brain. Helps me to think and so on and so forth. Here's four more. That's eight thousand dollars right there. Okay. You have to build up your magnetic frequency. Just don't do it overnight. Uh, magnets not only will take away most pain in three and a half minutes. They promote the vibrations of your blood. They promote your oxygen carrying capacity. So, yes, magnetic mattress pads, any kind of magnets, use them. Start building up your potential because our planet is becoming magnetic. That's why magnets are back. Go ahead. Yeah, we've been researching magnets for about 18 years. Um, still can get the Chicago Bulls to take them. We even met Ron Harper. He took it back and, and uh, still works and stuff, wouldn't okay it. So a lot of the Bulls are at least beginning to use it now. I hope it got to Jordan. I can't contact him. But now that sports teams are using magnets, people are beginning to understand the power of magnets. Well, they go beyond that. Mm -hmm. They can raise the frequency of your blood, and if you become more magnetic, you can become, you know it because you start dreaming in color, you probably can't sleep more than about four and a half hours. You can rest, but you can't sleep more than four and a half hours. And, you know, most of the pain starts going away and all like this. So I would say magnets are definitely one of your resources to use now. Mm -hmm. Right here. Yeah. You mentioned uh, children being uh, taught to read from left to right horizontally when they should be taught vertically. Well, you they mean? should. Yeah, vertically is much easier, comfortable because you don't just go flat. You don't go across the page. You're supposed to split your eyes and go down the page. This is what they call like photographic, so that the whole page seems to roll. Like when you look at the TV set, you don't concentrate just on one picture on the TV set. Mm -hmm. You look at the whole screen to get it. When you go to TV show, they have cinematography. You get back and you try, you know, you're, you're flashing back and forth your eyes. Well, that's also entrainment. When you can do that, you can generate more blood and more energy to the brain, and it will record it. It actually will photograph these kind of things. But we're told to go sight reading, word for word. Now, tell you a minute. Don't read so fast. Slow down. Go word for word. Enunciate that. Then, to say you go pay Evan and Woods at $380 a day to speed up and scan the page instead of let that psychic mind come in. Yeah, um, I'm not going to give you another secret, but I, uh, some of my students, and when I got through school, uh, I had to learn a way because it put too much on me. I couldn't study all that stuff. I found a way to speed read and give it back to my subconscious mind, and they thought I was cheating because I'd be able to almost tell you everything was on that page. It's a certain thing you have to do, and we're just taught all along. We're not taught how to really use our brain. We're taught to use how one hemisphere and the whole right brain just goes away. The right brain is your melanated brain so-called subconscious. <laughs> I don't know what subconscious means. That's really coming to a partial total consciousness. And the whole thing is to ingrain. You have to use both hemispheres. Then, you know, things become easy. Memory improves everything. <coughs> Questions? Yes. In, in the house that you take, uh, are the one that you put in the TV only, or is it where you put the radio type in? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite understand. The tape that you're tape? selling or uh -huh. issuing out or whatever, are all of them TV to be shown on the TV? Or no, I have audio tapes. I got a whole case of audio tapes right here. And I'd love to be able to go on the airplane and not have to let them look through every tape when I go through because they can't let them get scanned. Okay? A whole case of tapes. The tapes, if you got a tape list, there were two long legal size sheets. Did you get a tape list, sir? Yeah. You get one of these? Yeah. Okay, it's three pages. Uh, a lot of those we all, I have with me tonight. And I'll make a price because I really like to not have to leave back with them. I have audio tapes. Uh, I think it's about 50 of them. And I have uh, some video tapes. And if not, then you can write to our center if you like them and we'll mail them to you. Thank you. Dr. Blair? Yes. Um, you spoke about some um, pro or the problems with our water supply and our air supply and our food supply. Well, and I probably missed the solutions, but do you have some solutions that uh, you'd like to share with us? There's one that even I dare not say that you'll be hearing about probably by the first of the year that they're trying to keep out of this country. What you can still get in this country. <coughs> K07, and I had uh, another one again, which is called Pyramid Water. It's crystal energy gale, and water, uh, but I left it 
you can begin your future water with pure oxygen. Mm -hmm. All they really have to do in any city's water supply is aerated or ozonated or put oxygen into it. That's all they have to do. But they put 38, 28, 50 chemicals, whatever sits their mind. Uh, all your food should be soaked in these, in this KO7 or Genesis 1000 or some kind of oxygenating capacity thing. You put it in the tap water, I would suggest if you're drinking, of course, do not drink any anything but steam distilled water. Some people say spring. If you know what I know about some springs, I wouldn't even do that. You want the water from a good source, then you want to steam, and if you can triple distill it and put it through charcoal and every other thing, do so. Because what they're feeding you now is terrible. That's reverse okay. osmosis you're reverse about? Well, that's one. Reverse osmosis, charcoal, distilled water is steamed. Mm -hmm. It actually it evaporates, regen or recondenses, and each time you do it, it's a process of distillation. It should be three times, but they don't. Then you can put it through a reverse osmosis filter if you're a lot, you're going to lose a lot of water when you do that, if you know. Then you can put it through your tap water that's activated. But whatever you do, please don't drink the tap water. That's bad enough, we have to wash with it. That's all we should do. And again, this is what we have, what we call KO7 and pyramid energy water to hold that. Uh, some years ago, I think I heard Dick Gregory say that uh, distilled water, it had uh, a magnetic, magnetic pull to it, uh, and it took the minerals and vitamins out of the body. And he said he suggested spring water over distilled water. You have any idea what he's alluding to or talking about? He told the truth, except for one part, which I uh, disagree with him on. Distilled water is an atomic neutral. It will pull. It gives you no minerals, and it pulls everything out of the body. But one of our problems is the wrong kind of minerals in the middle of the buildup. If you take some spring water, you pour it into a pan, and you let it just osmose, you just let it stay out of that, or if you add heat to it, you pretty soon have a little incrustation on whatever it was there. You do that three times a week for seven days, you get a buildup you can visibly see. The same thing happens in your body, especially if you take any homogenized things, dairy products, uh, pastas, anything like that, and this is where you start getting your kidney stones, your gall stones, and every other day on thing and clogging up. Now, it does not have enzymes in it, but most water does it. It's activated now. And the problem uh, there that it's magnetic and draws everything out, you want to clean out. You can get colloidal minerals. In fact, that little bottle right there is colloidal minerals. If you go to a health store, you can get some of the best, and the only minerals that take are colloidal. But you want to know what kind of minerals you're getting. Some of these minerals are very toxic. And some of these minerals, they don't tell you the sources you're getting them from. And the water flows to underground streams. It's full of mercury and every other day one thing. Well water, artesian spring water. Let me tell you something that you don't have to, you don't have to cut it off. Sorry. Anybody stay here, please stop. I don't know where to go. Let's go upstairs. Uh, I would like to ask, we have a service for water, silver, and silver water, and we have to use that water to water. Have you ever heard of it? Yes. Why did you mention that? I think I brought one. Uh, I guess I did. I thought I brought Well, anyway, we carry it. I thought I had a vial of it here. I must have left that empty. Yeah, we carry colloidal silver and we carry colloidal gold. You have to work up to the gold. The silver will kill most bacteria and germs on contact. Much mm. uh, better even than the, uh, that stuff that the bees have. Uh, yeah, what it is now. But uh, we propolis. We propolis will counteract it. But silver, silver loid will raise the vibrations of the blood to a silver level. Gold level, of course, right now would make you break out. But you can even work to gold. And uh, we do carry it. Cancer, things like that. Anything. 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 And in fact, pure ozone in air is one of the best things for cancer cells. Cancer cells do not like light, do not like pure oxygen, and they want filth. Mm. And they want cells to have lost their cell governor. That's why they try to knock out the cell governor and then to convert the cell. That's why you have what they call now your free radical inhibitors. Mm -hmm. We have rapeseed oil, we have pycnogenol, all of those are free radical inhibitors which stop those cells from becoming wayward and cross-linking, causing the tumors and things. Okay. It's going to be one yeah, more time. <laughs> all right. When we take we do the things to raise the frequency in our body. Will we be able to create with our minds the things that our bodies can do? 
We didn't do that. Breatharian seems to be what is possible to do. People who have fasted, best guy I was ever able to make it 21 days, and I've tried past, and I just haven't passed that little barrier. I'm praying for strength. <coughs> People who could actually get into 28 day fast, they don't want to eat. They become uh, anorexic is when you have uh, what you don't want to eat, and what the other one, but believe me, you don't eat too much. Okay. They become anorexic because your body then wants to get the spirit out, and therefore it doesn't want mass. And then you can breathe things, you can breathe food energies, and you get full. Uh, meat and stuff makes you want to vomit. You can smell, you know, you eat a cherry or something or a, a grape, and it's so sweet it almost makes you sick because you get a tune. Those enzymes then is what actually is a higher concept. What you're actually trying when you're fasting is to release the spirit body. And the more you do that, the less consciousness you need for the mass, the body mass. So to me, that's the way it's all working anyway. And whatever promotes that makes you develop those other powers that come with the spiritual person. You know, <coughs> Oh, wow, yes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the question I have is that you mentioned that there are seven kinds of humanoid life forms on the planet, and then you said that there were two underneath. Well, we got white, we got brown, we got black, we got yellow, mm -hmm. and we got kind of a tan. We have different names. Right. You got a green, and you got a, an amphibian type. <coughs> and of course, we don't even come in contact with them too much. But they're underground. Most of them. And they have Sometimes they get all underground. They have a certain look. <laughs> to the consternation of some folks. And now, of course, if they're in the cloning and gene spicing and vitamin manipulation, who knows what they got. But they're crossing everything now. They're doing anything a mad scientist will do with no spiritual self. <coughs> you know, if they can do it genetically, they do it now. You heard about Dulce, New Mexico, Area 51, mm -hmm. uh, Montauk. Well, that's what they do. Yes, sir. I have a two-fold two question. Uh, getting back to the original question, if I heard you correctly, you said getting the spirit out of the body? Is that what you said? I believe in the mind, spirit, soul, and body. Okay. And the spirit is what gives you your connection between mind and body. The soul is what lets you become period. The soul man, soul man. And when you begin to fast and you use body mass, you give more energy to the spirit than you are the body. And a person, you really, I didn't say religious, not that spirit, when you do that, then your cravings are different, your desires are different, the energies that you feed on are different, you, you resolve. You're really vibrating faster, you're resonating. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole different... But you're saying when uh, one eats food, you're feeding the spirit? No. You feed the body. The essence of the food fills your spirit. And the thought of the food and the kind is told you where your spirit is. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you. The second question is relating back to the uh, spirit. Uh, you say we are not to give the information of the same year we want to uh, hear about it. That was an answer to, I think, some water or something I was saying again. Um, it will come out. I mean, they're knocking people off talking about this water right now. And um, it is a water, but it's a different kind of water. Have to wait next year? Well, I don't know how well, you have to wait long. If you want something and you tune for it, you'll get it. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's a pattern that wants you to have it, you'll get it. If they they may make a broadcast of it. They're going to have to capitulate some. They can't keep doing what they're doing. Today, and most of them want their lives. So they're going to have to start releasing a lot of things. So I'll give me this time. <laughs> Okay, any other questions? Yes. About the HARP program, could you talk about that a little bit more? HARP? HARP. High Active uh, Rural Research Project. It is in Kokona, Alaska. It is a, um, an area there of about 30 miles known. I don't know what else they may have to support it. That has an array of antennae. Some of the antennae that go up again, you know, three, four hundred feet, and they're arrayed in a square. This array, um, in most cases, what they have done is to broadcast outward. They'll put an array, and, and each thing beams up. These things are arrayed so that all of them will reach a point that, when it gets pretty much up to what they call the ionosphere, and all this beam will then come together. 
They're saying, when asked about it, they first started the HARP program supposedly to contact submarines over the horizon. Mm -hmm. Then they wanted to do it to contact troops and, and, and uh, platoons over the horizon. They bounce off the signal and bounce it down. But then they said they wanted to do it so they could release a ballistic missile without using so much of an energy booster, booster rocket, and this would clear the path by rendering things in front of it. They just follow the beam on up and they get it out of space. All those are lies. What they're doing with it is to send up a signal. It can change the ionosphere and help to hope that they can put up a little barrier against the incoming frequencies. But then they bounce it off of the satellite and they can begin to look into the Earth for finding what has been hidden for us, for the hidden caves and tunnels and things deep beneath the Earth, but they're looking for a place to go to and a safe place to hide. <coughs> no. <laughs> See if there's somebody else here. Okay. Yes, there's somebody else. I'll come back to you, but I just want to get everybody together. I had my hand up and you didn't see me. Well, I've seen you many times, Mr. Conway. Uh, could you uh, give me a little information on the West Syria? I believe that's what you said it was. Mm -hmm. The Red Plague. Right. Best as I understand, uh, they've been worried about it now since about 90, about 80, about 87. But the scientists have reported that they just didn't give any heed to it. Uh, it supposedly was found very greatly in North Carolina. Carolina. And they said it was a plant that was uh, that grew on the bottom of the water there. They don't know how. I probably would have to guess, but at any rate. Then they found it was attacking fish, and the fish had these little red spots and growth fungi on them. And then as fish that way out in the ocean began to happen. Then they began to wake up one day and the thing had crawled up on the piers. It was growing on the piers and stuff. Then it began to get on the sand. And then it changed from a plant, it mutated into an animal. Uh, and then uh, they closed down all the beaches there on those five states for about two weeks, went into conference, and then they found out the thing had already mutated, was capable to be air vector, both back to get into the air, and then it's around in the Gulf of Mexico, it's around there in the Carolina, uh, on the California coast. I don't know where all it's not, but it's called Wisteria or the Red Plague. Thank you. Yes. Um, I think that we can use like barley grains help raise that vibratory rate in the body to, to, to take things to cleanse the waste out of the body. What can we do to help the vibratory rate raise? What can we do? A lot of things. Oxycleanse, putting oxygen into the colon, getting a lot of irrigation and keeping, you know, so you don't have any buildup and your small intestines can dump. Um, oxy caps, you get more oxygen into the body, magnets to help Keep things on the move and raise the vibrations of the blood. Silver Lord, gold, when you can find any work up to it again. <laughs> Meditation, color breathing. Uh, I like Corella. That's stuff that the Japanese use over there when you've got the hell bomb on them. And Corella brought them through, so we got them through from radiation poison. That's what I use. And then, of course, uh, if you can get some good produce, soak it, of course, in the oxygen. The oxygen matter, so it gets the germs and bacteria killed them, and then run it for the enzymes. You know, your celery, carrots, beets is a very good thing, too. But you have to be so careful and you have to soak these things in some of these oxygenated sources, but also bacteria and the fungi are just too strong. Anything that can raise your vibration. Wow, yes. Uh, I'd like to piggyback off the sister's question. I heard you uh, name a number of things uh, in terms of uh, dealing oxygen in the body. Uh, one thing that I need to mention in terms of like, using uh, the oxy cleansers in terms of foods that are already natural. Oxygenated conductors like few finished foods like uh, yams, black eyed peas, and so a lot of things you already eat that are natural oxygenated conductors. Do you suggest using the same methods for cleansing them? Are you saying that those substances, because of the irrigation methods that they use now, uh, contain less oxygen uh, for us once we cleanse them to provide more of the oxygen uh, cleanse and enhance those few finished foods? I think they would enhance them, and unless you're able to grow your own and know what's on it, uh, all food, organic or not, crosses the state line is fumigated by state inspectors. So I don't care how you grew it, once they state inspected and comes on those ships and the boats and the trains and stuff, you already got poison in them. Some of these seeds, you know, they got another thing now called a uh, seed, seed register, what they call Terminator seed, in which now you only want to get one growth. Out of any seeds, then you have to buy and pay them more, but they've already gene spiced it, and they won't sell the farmers any good seeds anymore. 
So I would think very greatly that what you're getting is not good anyway, but if it is, it won't be for long. So you have to hide your seed and get your own farm, and then hope that something falls from the sky to form a stone ship and all the rest of the stuff. We're living on a terrible planet just trying to be destroyed and to say you've got a battle now for help. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Do you also recommend um, uh, the food grade house of dioxide? Yeah. Okay, yeah, the food grade. Yeah, um, I recommend it, but you have to be very careful with it. Right. In fact, now they've got a ban on even selling you pure pint bottles of 35% mm -hmm. food grade hydrocontact. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Most health food stores that still carry it are doing it with cupidity because uh, they can put them in jail now. They're getting a law against that. Mm -hmm. If you get it already diluted, like Don's back was and oxygen, we carry that. But here's something happened. Don's back, one of the ones I use is Don's back, 35% food grade hydrogen peroxide. The, um, what's the name of this company? I forget it now. It took them over now. Mm -hmm. And I actually had it created while I put it in my mind. They, when they first were labeling it, after they went to uh, about 30 minutes hiatus, they stopped the 30 uh, day hiatus and changed over. On there was FDC Red 40 and a couple other things in there. And I called and I asked the guy I was getting it from before, because we buy so many things, we get most of our stuff at a very low uh, wholesale price. Why did you do this? What is this? And I tasted it and it was repulsive to me. And then I had the lemon lime, which I used to love that. It did taste repulsive. They said that they didn't do it. Well, I already got the one where they labeled it correctly. Next back, had on their uh, natural food color mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So, and that's already diluted to uh, the state. If you've got stuff that's not diluted, I'd say hoard it, but be very careful with it. You know, <laughs> you have to just space that stuff out. You take the wrong doses and you're in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's, that's just a clarification. But, but uh, what I'd like to ask is how can we? Um,
as you said, back, back to my son, is just that I had had a vision of him from the two years before he was in the state. You had what? A vision. A vision of him? Of him. And, um, and he's definitely, he's a challenge, that's for sure. But it's just that I, I know that it has to go hand in hand with something else. Um, but I'm frustrated because I don't know how to, how to use him, for lack of a better description, because I know he's here for a reason. Um, and I've, I've often asked, you know, people that I know, you know, how to work around this, um, because he's definitely talented. Well, you can come for a consultation. You can buy the tape on children, buy the tape on man, woman, and children, or again, do a lot of meditating and then pray. You have to come slower that way, but there'll be one that you can accept or they'll come to you. Other than that, you have to believe what I'm saying or what the tape says. There are no new souls being born now. They're all old souls back for a reason, and the reason is what they want to do. This is why they have to come to it this time. And they're strong. If you don't control them, they will ride over you, walk over you, and leave you because they came here for a purpose. No new souls being born this time. In fact, the souls coming in now, they got to be either crazy or really here for a purpose. So they come at a time when, uh, by the time that they're 12, you know, we might not even have a plan. We will, I'm just joking, but there'll be so much chaos. They're the ones who settle the chaos. They do not play, they do not reason, they feel, and they act. Yeah. If you can't get to them in the womb, you get it once you get out of the body. Now you're going to have to go back to your womb self to find out how to do that now. That's when the kind of contact when you're conceiving and carrying. Yes? What year is it? <laughs> That's a very good question, and I don't want to get into that. By the way, too, the coming planetary alignment I did not deal with. I dealt with the sun, and I said that it was an alignment. What some are saying, like Professor Noonan, and oh, there's a lot of different books, 5,000, 5, Iced, and all this kind of stuff. What they're saying is that by May 5th, 2005, that there will be a big cataclysm here on Earth. It will happen because all the planets in our solar system will align against the Earth. There will be one planet to the right and every other planet will be in exact opposition to the Earth, which will put such a stress and strain on the Earth that it's supposed to be either slip out, be destroyed, have all kind of volcanic and earthquake activities. But what will really happen is Earth becomes a very special phenomenon. I really don't want to get into that. That's a very special lecture, but tonight they're making me say more than I usually want to say, so I don't know what's so special about you guys, but I can only say that, oh yeah, I fight, but when they say to say it and I don't, then I'm in trouble, and I definitely can't fall out with the gods. So I have to put it like this, that the opposition will really mean that we are singled out, because we are one of 22 planets that had a special thing to do for a various life force to come here and develop to see if they could co-mingle and make it. I think the thing is, the spirit is a failure myself, but they seem to think it's not. But whichever, um, at that time, the Earth will kind of get a triple promotion, and things will be changed here. And when we <coughs> awaken to see 11 other planets in our system, because we can't see the other three now, and our sun in new brightness, then of course things will have changed. But what the meteorologists and geophysicists are saying is that the alignment will cause all nine planets, or eight planets in our system, there's 12, but they're still talking about eight and nine. Uh, we being the ninth, to come in opposition to us at that time and will cause a lot of strain and stresses on the Earth and the Earth may even fracture or be thrown out of orbit or just the pole. And that's what they're referring to. 2005, May 5th. That's, oh, okay. um, then, as spirit beings, if the Earth will flip or split or whatever, as spirit beings raising our frequency, we become spirits and we can choose to move the spirit to other planets that are in alignment, that are still home, or... <laughs> well, my understanding is we do that anytime we go to sleep if we want to anyway, or we could have. We kind of lost a lot of that power now. So now we get it as dreams and we never complete our dreams and we can't wake up in the dreams. If we do, we find ourselves outside the body, we get scared of heck, go through trauma, pop back in, and then we would never do that again. Um, 
when the pattern has the correct frequency, you can change into any of those bodies that you've been gifted enough to have. Physical is not a reality. Physical is probably the lowest vibration as I understand you can possess. That's why it deteriorates and so hard to keep it going. But the spiritual and mental, you can always recreate and procreate because these are the vibrations much faster than the physical. So when our planet changes the vibration and becomes magnetic, then we get to see other planets in this system and other systems we can't even see now because of the frequency and the low frequency we are off. Is there something to that happens to you when sounds bother you, like a certain person's voice annoys you, or if it's something you hear on the radio, you have to turn it off because that frequency is annoying you where before problem wouldn't? Yeah, sure. So what and happens to you? I'm sorry, I, I cut you off. No, what happens to the, the person? I'm, I'm speaking for myself. What may be happening it's like you're going to see people, uh, to digress this a little bit, pretty soon walking down the street, not only are they talking to themselves, I don't mean the ones on crack cocaine and high on alcohol, but they'll also be doing this. You see people, like they hear buzzing or it's a bee around. There will be nothing there, but on the right side they'll feel the frequency. And it'll be annoying, and you see them doing it, and kind of looking around like this. Those were them who are slow to develop when they're fighting it. But on your own self in general, um, res vibrations are emitted in the tympanic membrane, you can hear it, and the vocal cords um, excite it. That's how you can talk and hear. Each of those, you have to tune to a certain vibrational rate in order to form those different syllables and monosyllables. It's like the teacher for mantras and chants. When you put certain energies into it, it means certain energies in your body are now transforming into sound. So there are certain things that the person, you're not just hearing it, you're tuning to it. When you tune to it, if the person is a person that you don't like or has vibrations you don't like pretty soon, you can hear that in the tone of their voice. You can sense that even though they say nothing. It's a way of being what they call psychic. And when we get it on a rudimentary farm uh, uh, plane, since sound is your lowest register and travels the slowest, that's the first thing you awaken to. But before a person even says anything pretty soon, you can look at them, you make eye contact, you can sense what's, what's there. And if they speak, definitely, the tonal vibration could either, you know, excite you or make you nauseous or turn you off or make you, you know, none to hear it to it, whatever. But sound is a, is a force in power, but it's much slower in travel than light or vibration of frequencies above. Yeah. Uh, you speak about uh, three other planets. Is it, like you said, that we're in the physical realm, it's so low now that we can't see them? Or is it uh, that they're like in another dimension? Or that they're what? In another dimension, so uh, we got to make that kind Similarly, of they're here. Um, one is that our vibrations were not right to see them. Another is right, uh, because we don't even know what kind of look like. And we depend upon the astronomers and geophysicists to let us know. For instance, on Apollo 15 mission, they discovered the 10th planet. It's being talked about in astronomical journals. How many kids in school or children in school are being taught about the 10th planet? Even the position of that 10th planet. Okay? Um, they found, they used to have Jupiter had nine moons. They found 12 moons around Jupiter now. They have reported other three. But they tried to send to the Jason scholars a package to blow up Titan. And they want to settle on Europa. I mean, you know, <laughs> when you have somebody else doing your technology, you're called victim as a child would to whatever that parent tells you. How do you do you know? So those are the uh, planets that you speak of? Pardon? Are those the planets that you speak of? I no. There is, I, I really want to get into that too because the names may be wrong later. I know the names that they're using, but what does it mean? One's supposed to be on the orbit of Jupiter, one is where the asteroid belt is now, and one is an intermercurial planet. That's supposed to be their positioning, but who knows? <coughs> um, the pyramid that you say is located in Illinois, exactly where is that in Illinois? Cahokia State Park, Edwardsville, between Collinsville and, and the highway between Edwardsville and Collinsville, <coughs> you can Cahokia State Park. They call it part of the last of the Indian mounds from the Ohio mounds that come through. That is where the, the head rests. And they have a very interesting thing there too. They have in that pyramid a it's larger than the space in the Giza pyramid, and uh, it's not quite as high as 300 feet. 
76 feet or something like that. But they have a room in there, which is very interesting, where they have a centerpiece, <coughs> something that's there buried in the ground, and then they have spears, like a spear tip, in circles, and it has 12, 13 to 12 concentric circles around it. What is interesting, each of those circles and each of those spears is a different tribe or nation. Some of them, as they are the ones that were uh, closest to it, were from material, rocks and plants and things that are found across the ocean, under the ocean, other continents. And it's as though whoever this dignitary that was there or whatever happened there, people had pilgrimage from around the earth to come there and made their representative spear tips in circles, and it shows that there were many nations that came. Something happened there very special. <coughs> but of course, uh, I have not been able to research it, and I believe nothing that I'm told from them, so I let it right. Yes, sir. Vermont. 
And I have actually gone for a um, the gathering of the Cherokee elders is what they call it. And actually the scenery behind us is a particular area of the mountain range at the top of the mountain that came up with the colony. And I was so drawn to this area, I, I really couldn't concentrate on anything else but that. And I was frustrated because I felt like I had to get to the top but didn't know how and also for lack of time. Um, and then uh, also there was a, a song that I heard on, on, on a CD that I played that I had heard before. And this one particular time when I played it, it actually had the singing of whale on, uh, on the song. And this one particular time when I played it, it's it like it just literally smacked me because I felt the intense draw to be near the water or to be, to, to be near the ocean. And I've never had anything pull on me like these particular incidents um, in regards to nature. Now, I, I appreciate nature and I'm actually spending more time to look at it and things like that, but how do you deal with things like that? Is it, is it meant to me? to go up to this mountaintop or I, I can't understand what this what this drawing sensation was. And it's so intense that I feel like if I can't get back to Vermont that I need to go like maybe to uh, Kentucky or some other mountain to get the same feeling or lesson or or I'm I'm not sure. Well you could have had a previous incarnation there. You could have soul traveled there. You could just tune to the vibrations which did something with the minerals and the plants that are there that attached and attracted your vibrations with the minerals and plants that are in you. Could be a lot of reasons. The point is, if it is there, it probably can be duplicated but not likely. It's probably a special place for you, not just going to mountain tops. If mountain tops are the thing, then you have the Pyrenees. Uh, you can go, I mean, you can go to uh, a lot of places where um, the vibrations of Mount Shasta, for instance, a barren rock place, but one that's got a whole lot of activity inside. Uh, I don't think it's so much the mountain uh, for the height as it is just the resonance that is special to you. Well, it's, it's so interesting that it wasn't just the mountain range, because then it continues, you know, to continue, you know, it's hard to see this one particular area that. And I kept focusing it. And well, as, I told you, as I told you, um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can say is if you believe in reincarnation, that could have been a hot spot or a love spot or something <coughs> for you in a previous incarnation. Uh, if you believe in certain zones, as they say, they have what they call vortexes. And I don't want to get into that because there's not enough time for it. But certain vortexes, areas that you are drawn to because it resonates with your spirit, with your vibration. Um, you know, I wouldn't know unless we had a consultation. We really want to get into a lot of things, a regression, things like that. And I don't know if it's worth that to you or me to take that much time. But that would be there's an affinity for it, either this lifetime or another, or the vibrations with there. Yes. Excuse me. I'm trying to uh, comprehend, um, you know, the magnetic increase that you spoke of in regards to uh, the Y2 case, I, I was going to ask you this question on any way that you just elaborated into that and that was the most invisible explanation that I heard uh, even listening to Jerry uh, Dorsey but not on, uh, on the uh, show. But this increase as a replacement for electricity, even in our in our bodies, you know, electricity is the cold in our, our bodies, but I'm sure um, that this will replace um, the magnets that were present in you. And I remember when we uh, had the metaphysics workshop that you did back in '94, and you introduced us to it, and we were we had certain magnets on the on the left arm, <coughs> you know, that we weren't on the right because of the blood flow in regards to the heart. And I know you were saying that people that had um, the uh, heart monitor or something inside of them that they had to stay away totally from the uh, magnets, but I don't know what the question is I'm trying to develop, but in trying to comprehend the effect that it would have on our whole physiological structures, the change there, the heart, how would that deal with the heart, how, how would the heart, you know, um, how would that 
How does this affect the heart since it's on its own vibratory rate and electricity is a part of our internal function at this present time? Okay. Is this for other people? Makes sense. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I thought I recognized it. I wasn't sure. And uh, you know, somebody can see. Well, like the the um, pacemakers and stuff, of course, replaces your heart and puts you on a different beat. I'll make a statement to you because you are you and you were around in 94. And this is long before the Rakaaba was around and Glenn Ballo came through and started messing up some of my people too. That's what I'm saying. Um, I will simply say this, that um, the heart is an organ of sight and it's a pump, okay? But others believe it is a pump and an organ of blood flow. Actually, the heart is a valve, not a pump. And it takes the frequency of the blood to open it or clog it. If the heart chakra is open and you are seeing with the heart, then it takes a stronger blood vibration to make it function correctly. That's why you're going to have a lot of heart failures, a lot of uh, apoplexy, a lot of things along that line. If, if you remember in all these psychic manifestations, now I'm talking about the negative ones now, we see this guy in there. The heart is always with the eye there. You see and feel with the heart. And then you can reach both the upper and lower body, the lower chakra and the upper chakra. So with that in mind, magnets can help you to increase the heartbeat or can stop the heartbeat. For a person who is not well magnetized, they shouldn't even have a magnet anywhere near the heart. And anytime you have any inserts of metal in your body, you should not even use a magnet because it can offset everything. But if you can raise the frequency of the body by putting gold and silver into it, then the heart, the rate of your blood will increase. All your organs that can use that blood must work on a higher spectrum and your heart will begin to be what's supposed to be a valve, not a pump. It will react to the blood and open up the chambers rather than have the blood pump through and you know, check it. So one thing begins another thing. Magnets are keys that are kind of becoming magnetic. And the easiest thing to do, which at that time I was not speaking so much of because I have to learn, I was in the <coughs> would be to use diodes to stop the negative radiation from entering into you so that the magnets and the silver and the gold can begin to operate as efficiently and your body can utilize it. Right now, with all this electrical frequency, your body doesn't get a chance because as soon as it starts to get that way, here comes a big bombardment from the hair dryers and microwave ovens and the computers and the cell phones mm -hmm. and the TV sets and all the rest of it and all your body's doing is going around the circle. So. Could you elaborate too on the cell phone with that, what you did then? It, it's increased since the time you were giving us that information sometimes. Okay, and see last know? night we went into that very deeply and I know you weren't there and it probably was the reason why you couldn't. I appreciate you coming out tonight. But a cell phone, we call it the cell phone health. Um, you put the antenna up and make contact with the cell phone. Okay. If your carrier, or whatever is the company you bought it from, makes you lose a signal or you fade out and you get angry. So they have to boost the signal for orbiting satellite. When you put it up, you're actually telling through your brain because it grounds out through you because your, your biggest frequency is right up in your brain. Okay? And therefore, kids can start, glaucoma can start, warts can start, air falls out, hearing loss, all these kinds of things because you're being radiated. So we always get, I always give this, you know, this guy, Lewis, uh, again, it was a part of the best corporation that died of an advanced brain tumor. After he had an examination in February, died in May of an advanced brain tumor. Plus Reginald Lewis, he had this heavy computer, I mean this heavy uh, cell phone. And of course he wanted to keep in contact, he was a big businessman, he wasn't joking, he was, but he got a computer, he got a cell phone that would not lose the signal too often. So how in the world can you get an examination to have an advanced brain tumor later on? And yet they wanted them out, and that was the easiest way to do it. So cell phones, unless you ground them out or have a dial, they're sucking on again. As I say, I have my American Express card with me. I don't leave home without it. It's called a dial.